So now we look at something called the conductance, inductive susceptance, and admittance. And we can see mathematically what these, uh, what these look like. The conductance, of course, we've learned in the past is 1 over, or the reciprocal of the resistance, and it has the units of Siemens. For inductive susceptance, we can see that we have 1 over the, uh, the reactance, X sub L by 90, which gives us a term we call B sub L, the susceptance, at minus 90 because we move the angle into the numerator. So we have minus J uh, B L, the susceptance. And for the admittance, we use the value Y, and the term is 1 over the impedance. Y is equal to Y at an angle of minus or plus because, again, we move the angle into the numerator, theta. So phasorally or vectorally combining them, we have the admittance, which is the total inverse susceptible uh, 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 impedance, G minus J B L. So if we look at, again, our uh, parallel circuit, we can see then that for a parallel circuit, just like we solved before, Y is equal to when we combine the two terms, phasorally or vectorially, g squared plus b sub l squared, and we take the square root. And we can see the phasor diagram then is showing us then the conductance, just like the resistance along the x-axis, b sub l just like x sub l on the negative y-axis. And our resultant, or hypotenuse of the right triangle then y, then is the magnitude and angle of the result of combining those two terms into a polar form. So let's look at an example. <clears throat> For the lead circuit shown below, determine the output voltage in phasor form when the input voltage has an RMS volt value of 5 volts. Draw the input and output voltage waveforms showing their peak values, the inductive reactance X sub L for 314 and the angle phi that it made, 65.2, were found in the previous example. So the first thing we need to do then is determine the output voltage in phasor form. So in, we have V out is equal to V out at an angle of phi. So V out is defined as X sub L over the sum of the two uh, vector terms, R squared, X sub L squared, summed, and take the square root. The angle then at an angle of phi. So when we put our values in, 314, 680, 314, multiply it times the voltage, 5 volts in, at an angle of 65.2, we end up with 2.10 at an angle of 65.2. The peak voltages of the voltage then are V in peak, V out peak. So for RMS, again you'll recall 1.414 for RMS volts in and 1.414 volts out. So 5 volts times 1.414 gives us 707 volts and for the output for 1.414 times 210, which we just calculated on top, we get 297 volts. So the waveforms with their peak values are shown in the diagram. Notice that the output voltage leads the input voltage by that angle of 65.2 degrees, okay? So we can see that what we calculated here is the maximum values of each V in and V out. And we have V in then starting from the origin, V out then is leading by 65.2. Determine the total admittance and total impedance for this circuit. Draw the admittance phase diagram. So we have a parallel circuit, 1 kHz for our frequency at the input, 
we have a pure resistance of 330 ohms and we have an inductor at 100 milli henrys. So we gather up our terms, our, our knowns, resistance 330 ohms. We take the inverse of that to get the conductance 1 over R which gives us 3.03 milli siemens. Now we can take our values and run them through the uh, inductive reactance relationship 2 pi FL that gives us 2 pi 1000 hertz 100 millihenries or 628 ohms. B sub L then, the inverse of X sub L, our susceptance, gives us 1 over 628 ohms or the inverse 1.59 milli siemens. So from that in rectangular form we can find the the total admittance Y total G minus J B sub L. So there is our rectangular form. Now we can take the, those terms and put them into the polar conversion. J, G squared plus B sub L squared, take the square root and the inverse tangent of the susceptance over the conductance gives us a value then when we take the Pythagorean theorem, the inverse tangent, we get a value in polar form 3.42 at an angle now of minus 27.7 milli siemens. Now we take the inverse of that to get the the uh, total impedance because it asks for the total impedance in our phasor diagram. So 1 over y total is that inverted 3.42 take the inverse the angle moved into the numerator becomes a positive angle 27.7 degrees. Okay um, actually is that correct? Because that's not what it's showing. Yes, that's correct because what we what we plotted here is the phasor form of the of the uh, the inverse. Okay, so this is the um, the admittance of the uh, phasor. Because they asked for the admittance phasor diagram, not the impedance. Sorry about that. Okay, so that is an example of calculating admittance and total impedance. Okay, when we come back, we'll take a look at this example.